Hi everybody, hope you're well. Today we'll read from a book titled Free Space Transformation Habité by Anne Lacaton and Jean-Philippe Vassal, published by Fundación ICO and Puente Editores. Free space, space that is not constrained, space under pilotis, space on balconies and in winter gardens, space on accessible rooftops, deep inner space, which never exists in standard spaces as it is considered too deep or useless. Extra space, which makes the programmatic space smoother, more fluid, less expensive. Space free of any program, eluding a specific defined function. Space that avoids rules and regulations. Space that isn't asked for, but that we find indispensable. Space that is created additionally, but that doesn't cost more. Space that costs nothing. Our approach, making do in all circumstances, starting off from what exists. Never demolishing or removing, but making the most of existing resources. Making do with the poetry, fragility, qualities and defects, shortcomings, the natural ground. Considering existing situations as possibilities and project materials. Creating greater surface area by using less territory. Creating double space, field space, free space. A simultaneous process of condensing, dilating, densification, extension. To shake free from budgetary constraints, uh, minimum standard programs, efficiency coefficients, urban regulations. Making floors like ground, on pilotee to release the natural ground, on open frameworks of posts and floorboards. As large as possible, to provide the program with space around. Linking these floors with uh, staircases, elevators, slopes, gentle flows, up to the last ground, the roof, always accessible. Domino House and the Polykatoikia in Athens, thinking about the subtle relationships put together, Cedric Price and the Invisible Sandwich. Releasing space on every ground. From the inside towards the limits of the floors and simply filtering out through transparent sliding bay windows, curtains, blinds, depending on the climate or season, through winter gardens and balconies. No walls, so no windows. Moving from the outside to the inside and finding again the outside from the inside out. The Katsura Imperial Villa and the case study houses. Separating indoor space with light and removable partitions, independent of structural elements. Enlarging, dilating, extending, doubling. Constructing double with the project's given budget, without spending more, to generate space for the program and for usage. Whether it is a matter of plants, usage, views, space, flooring or construction, the existing is the preliminary structure for all our projects. Whatever the era, the location or the usage, industrial, residential or cultural, whether we are talking about a tree, a garden or a landscape, the existing is a rich, complex material composed of multiple elements and qualities that we need to be able to look at keenly and attentively. Complex urban situations Abandoned industrial buildings which nevertheless offer generous and adaptable volumes. School buildings which no longer meet today's standards without actually being unusable. Existing housing, particularly modern housing, which no longer offers entirely satisfactory conditions in terms of technicality or comfort, but which is often well designed and offers more generous surface areas than is the norm today, etc. All these existing premises are not at the end of their lives. They remain valid structures and constitute precious building capacities. We have always considered the existing to be an opportunity. All situations offer a potential and capacities that can be reused, reactivated, integrated. All spaces enable invention and imagination. All restrictions can be turned into positives. 
all existing situations form a new material for projects. However, there is another certain misguided approach based on bold and mostly baseless statements that are then repeated endlessly without being requestioned, whereby the existing construction is often considered as definitely obsolete, irreparable, unusable and unupgradable. The construction is often condemned without the right to appeal, and the decision is invariably made to demolish it, to wipe the slate clean and start from scratch, while maintaining that the reconstruction will be carried out in an ecologically exemplary manner, although the balance sheet does not take into account the wastage involved in the demolition and all the value of what is lost. Demolition is an easy and short-term solution, which we consider to be the worst option, a mistake. It entails a loss of history and skill, a waste of materials, of energy and money. It is a losing strategy, right across the board. Starting off from an existing situation instead of always starting off from a clean slate situation is more economical, more ecological. The balance sheet is considerably more positive in every aspect, especially the social side. We never wish to see the existing as a problem, as a restriction. We never start off from the assumption that the existing is unusable. Instead, we consider every existing place as a resource, as an added value, rather than only seeing its defects, we always seek out its values and qualities, so that the project can benefit from them. Our attitude is to never demolish, never subtract or replace, always add, transform and use, supplement, update, start off with the existing to do more and to do better. Our attitude is to make do. Making do involves taking up the values and strengths of the existing, not opposing or denying them, but turning them into the basis and merit of a new project. This does not mean submitting or letting oneself be restricted or imposed upon, quite the opposite. It means inventing from the existing by accepting the place as something coherent and intelligent, as a whole. We invariably seek to prolong existing situations with the utmost delicacy and lightness, adding, adjoining, delaying, superimposing, strutting the existing. These proposals are more interesting than constantly starting afresh in a place that has been first cleaned up and emptied out. In architecture and urbanism, we believe in the importance of superimposition. The more a place is a vessel of multiple and combined imaginations, the more we see it as somewhere stimulating to inhabit, a trigger for new relationships. The superimposition of two situations, temporalities or usages allow us to tip over into a third space. The project will then invent a new, more sustainable situation, enriched by all its preceding histories and strata. This approach entails the casting of an attentive, observant, sharp, rigorous gaze searching for the values and coherence of the place or construction without inventing history. It also entails paying the same attention, with the same sharpness, the same rigor, in order to add on contemporary architecture whenever extending or generating usage is necessary. For the sake of technical and economic performance, the method in question relies on establishing a highly specific on-site inventory in order to identify and classify everything that can be reused and to judiciously define the interventions that must be made. This makes it possible to act in a targeted and discerning manner rather than taking a blanket approach and each space can therefore be used according to its capacity and intrinsic qualities, each building according to its composition and structure, and the heterogeneity that characterizes existing buildings is also taken into account. The guiding principle is to lose nothing. Habité conjures up the pleasure, the generosity, the freedom to occupy a space beyond the functional, whatever the usage. 
Whatever the project, the space to be inhabited should be generous, comfortable, adaptable, flexible, luxurious and affordable. It should offer the inhabitant the possibility to move about, to make the space their own. It should give the freedom to create possibilities for evolution and interpretation. Generally speaking, spaces for habitation do not offer such generosity. The habitation standards in cities are too small, too restrictive, and the same goes for workspaces. The strict application of norms almost always leads to habitations with minimum surface areas, thereby homogenizing dwellings, spaces, floor plans, comfort, as well as standardizing office spaces. Programs for public facilities, schools, museums are all strictly defined according to needs and they offer no margin for freedom and evolution. In all projects, we believe that it is necessary to create the largest spaces possible, far larger than the norm or program, in order to multiply usages and encourage appropriation, to create intermediary spaces between private and collective space or public space. For every project, we strive to construct just as much free space as programmed space. This extra space has no defined function. It is out of the program. It exists in addition to the traditional or programmed space. And the combination of the two different spaces generates freedom. It allows for appropriation and creation. In all cases, the extra space expands the capacity for usage, it multiplies atmospheres, possibilities. It permits interfaces and connections between private space and public space, creating spaces for mingling. It creates relationships. Visit the show at ECO if you are in Madrid and ask for the book at your local bookstore. Thank you for joining me today and see you in the next video. Bye.